Good morning, everybody. My name is Julian, and I'm a tech evangelist focusing on AI and machine learning at AWS. And today I'd like to discuss predictive maintenance with machine learning. The objective of maintenance is, of course, to minimize downtime and uh, unscheduled maintenance, to make sure that production facilities keep running as smoothly as possible. Unfortunately, this is a real challenge for a lot of companies and a lot of them struggle with uh, defining maintenance schedules and uh, executing those schedules. And as we can imagine, this has a large impact on the efficiency of production facilities and eventually costing uh, tens of billions of dollars because machines broke down and facilities had to be shut down uh, temporarily until the problems could be fixed. So this is literally a problem that every industry has, and uh, we're going to see how we can try to make it better with machine learning. Of course, maintenance is nothing new. Um, it, it's been around since uh, the dawn of industry. And uh, I guess the first strategy is the reactive strategy. Uh, wait until something breaks down, figure it out, fix it. Um, the problem here is obviously um, a lot of things break down all the time. Uh, Murphy's Law pretty much guarantees that. And so you'll find yourself interrupting production um, again and again and again uh, at the worst possible time. So uh, a slightly better strategy is planned maintenance. So having a, a well-defined maintenance schedule uh, where you're going to proactively replace uh, parts that could be uh, breaking down uh, down the line. Um, so this it's better because you kind of decide where you want to interrupt production, so you can uh, you can manage to do it in a in the least impactful way. However, you may be replacing parts that didn't need replacing, and you still interrupt production periodically for uh, for maintenance. And so uh, more and more companies are moving to predictive maintenance where they want to use data and uh, analytics to figure out when to replace a part. Uh, and you know, if it doesn't need to be replaced, then we won't replace it. And if we see early signs of failure that tell us something bad is going to happen, then uh, we act quickly and we interrupt uh, production at a very specific time just to fix this, and then we resume it. Okay, so predictive maintenance is really uh, uh, an increasingly popular technique to make sure production facilities keep running as smoothly as possible. And it's really about different things. It's about anomaly detection, so figuring out that something kind of weird is happening now. Um, the next step, uh, the next level up, so to speak, would be to understand uh, the root cause, you know, what's the, what's the actual problem here. And, and the last uh, level would be how long does this part have to go? Uh, how long can I keep using it before uh, there's a strong chance that it's going to fail? But, you know, anomaly detection is already very good because it's going to tell us something, uh, something bad is about to happen and we should act. So, as I said, predictive maintenance is uh, a, an increasingly popular technique. It's expected to save uh, a ton of money for industrial companies in years to come by preventing failures, uh, minimizing, minimizing risks, um, improving quality, uh, and obviously minimizing repair and maintenance costs because we will only act on parts or equipment that is really about to fail. Not not on the rest of the equipment that's just doing fine right now. Okay, so there are so many, uh, so many positive aspects to this. So building a predictive maintenance platform requires uh, three big uh, uh, steps. Now, the first one is, of course, to have sensors, right? You need physical sensors attached to your equipment uh, to pick up, uh, you know, vibration and temperature and pressure and all the physical quantities that uh, can be early um, um, uh, warning signs, right? Uh, so you could build them yourself or you could buy them. The second step is um, find a way to uh, capture the data uh, with the sensors and then funnel it 
into uh, a database or any kind of uh, storage area where you can uh, further uh, clean it and uh, and prepare it for analytics. Okay, so building that secure and scalable pipeline that will take sensor data all the way to uh, the location where it's going to be uh, processed. And that's not so easy. And finally, once you have your data in your central repository, of course, you want to uh, uh, process it. You want to train predictive models on it. And this is really where you know, machine learning lives and it creates a whole new bunch of challenges. Let's take a simple example. So this is a, a two motor pump. OK, and we're capturing uh, uh, RPMs. OK, and we're capturing flow rate and based on experience, based on, uh, you know, manufacturer specifications, we know that uh, um, certain ranges of value are OK. And uh, that's where the equipment is supposed to, to operate. And so if we see, uh, you know, low RPMs and low flow rate, that's OK. Uh, the pump is is idle or, you know, not running super fast. That's OK. And if we see high RPMs and high flow rate, well, then, you know, the pump is uh, is uh, revving and uh, and it's working as expected. OK, it's pumping whatever uh, liquid or fluid it's supposed to pump. OK, so that's fine. And uh, that's what we expect to see. But of course, uh, you know, Murphy's law applies at some point, you know, something bad happens. Uh, maybe the pump is uh, is clogged. Maybe something is not uh, working the way it's supposed to be. And you could see, for example, very high RPMs and low flow rates. OK, and that's not so good. So you could see data points that start to, you know, uh, drift or, you know, move away from those well-known uh, nominal uh, operation areas. And that's really what machine learning should pick up. Okay. Machine learning should understand what normal operation looks like. And then it should understand what uh, abnormal operation looks like. And of course, you know, usually it's going to be slowly degrading over time. Uh, and it needs to pick it up as quickly as possible, as early as possible, uh, so that we have uh, ample time to uh, go and fix this equipment. So this is really the challenge that uh, that machine learning is trying to fix. And it looks like a simple thing here because it's a simple example, but it's not so simple. Uh, it's what we call unsupervised learning. Um, those data points are, you know, raw data. They're not labeled by human experts. Um, this is just the data that's available. And so, uh, you know, you don't get uh, gray dots and red dots. You get dots. And you need to figure out which ones are okay and which ones are not okay. So that's what machine learning can help us with. But machine learning generally creates uh, challenges like, you know, what are the right applications? W what, uh, what use case is a good use case for machine learning? You know, what kind of problem can I solve with machine learning? And it's, it's a problem in general, and obviously it's a problem for industrial applications as well. So understanding, you know, where to apply ML and where not to apply ML is a kind of a project in itself. Then, uh, it's very, you know, the world is complicated and, you know, real life data is complicated. So even though you could be capturing data on, um, from coming from your sensors, um, you know, not all data is born equal, so to speak. Um, different equipment have different uh, ages, different failure histories. Uh, even sensors could have some variability. So, you know, the data that you get needs to be taken with a, a pinch of salt, it needs to be clean, it needs to be normalized, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and again, that's data preparation is the number one task that uh, data scientists work on, sometimes spending up to 80% of their time. So it's critical that you understand the data and how good or bad your data is. And yeah, obviously you need a, a skilled people to do all of this, uh, to define the machine learning problem, to uh, understand the data, clean the data. And, um, and of course, uh, build and train the models. And of course, manage all the IT infrastructure needed for that. So a lot of stuff needs to be dealt with here. And here's a typical machine learning workflow for our predictive maintenance. So going from capturing data to uh, aligning timestamps, making sure uh, all, the, all the time series are, are aligned coming from the different sensors. Uh, imputation, you know, filling in any missing values. Maybe one sensor is 
missing data points from time to time. Maybe, you know, maybe it broke down for a minute and then, you know, you need to fill in data in there. And then of course, you know, selecting algos, optimizing parameters for model training, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So all these boxes are complex machine learning steps. And this is where you need the experts. And, uh, you know, they're not so easy to uh, find and hire, uh, especially for smaller companies. And, you know, it's really a shame that we have to do all of this when really all we want is this, right? All we want is, is this sensor telling me that this equipment is going to fail? Yes or no? And ideally, you know, when is it going to fail? So everything else is just stuff we have to go through. But at the end of the day, the business problem we want to solve is what is going to fail and when. So in order to help our customers uh, simplify that kind of problem, we built a service called Amazon Monitron. And it's really a turnkey system for um, um, customers and companies who want to start using uh, predictive maintenance systems. And when I say it's a turnkey system, it's because it's really, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's all in there. You don't need anything extra. So you start with Monitron sensors, uh, which are um, sold by uh, Amazon. Uh, so these are, uh, you know, matchbox size um, sensors, and you can attach them to, um, to your equipment. Uh, they have a, a battery, so, you know, no wires, nothing, uh, nothing to worry about. Just, you know, stick them uh, on, the, on your equipment. And they're, they're going to chat using Bluetooth with the a Monitron gateway, uh, which is uh, going to collect all the data coming from the sensors. And uh, using Wi-Fi, it's going to send that data to the AWS cloud. Okay, so the only thing you need to do is uh, basically uh, uh, an internet-enabled uh, Wi-Fi connection. And so that data is going to be sent to, uh, to AWS. Machine learning models are going to be trained. And you're going to see uh, captured data in a mobile application that you can download and install on your, on your phone. And, uh, and you're going to get alerts uh, if something unusual is picked up by the models. And so a technician can go and inspect the equipment, confirm uh, that, yes, this is an alarm uh, or no, it's a false alarm, and then do whatever they have to do. And uh, this is really it. Uh, this is really a super simple uh, system. And again, you don't need anything else. You just need sensors, a gateway, and a mobile app. And uh, the, the setup of those sensors uh, takes place with your uh, using NFC on your phone. So, you know, in a few minutes, your sensors are deployed and they start capturing data. Uh, so Monitron is a, is a, good, uh, is a good service for uh, the, uh, the monitoring and analysis of uh, all kinds of uh, rotating industrial equipments like pumps, fans, compressors, and so on. And, uh, and we already have customers who've been, who've been working with us and uh, who've uh, adopted Monitron like uh, Fender, the guitar and uh, amplifier manufacturer. Uh, several divisions of uh, General Electric are, are using Monitron. Um, RS is also um, a predictive maintenance uh, specialist company and they're, they're uh, using and, uh, and reselling Monitron as well. And Amazon itself is using Monitron to uh, monitor uh, conveyor belts in uh, fulfillment centers. And uh, you can see this quote from, uh, from uh, Mr. Ackerson, the CIO of uh, GE Gas and Power Manufacturing. And I think it really hits the, uh, the nail on the head. Um, you deploy that system very quickly. Uh, it works with whatever equipment is already there uh, and you don't need any tech skills. If you literally, if you can install um, uh, an app on your phone, if you can use NFC and configure a Wi-Fi network, that's about it. And, and within, uh, within minutes, you see data flowing to, uh, to the cloud and, uh, and alerts are showing up once the models have been trained. So very, very simple service. The benefits, simple. I think I've said it enough times. No ML experience required. Um, it's cost effective. Um, the upfront is super low. The starter kit, which is uh, one gateway and five sensors, is uh, $715. And, and just, then you just pay as you go. Uh, it's $4.17 per sensor per month. And that's a, an odd number, but it, it really means $50 per sensor per year. Okay, so 
compared to the cost of the equipment you're monitoring, compared to the cost of breakdowns, this is a really, really low amount. Everything is secure end-to-end. -end. Now, data is secure from the sensor to the gateway, to the cloud, to the app, so no worries there. And the system keeps improving. Um, we can make over-the-year updates to uh, all the hardware, and of course, the models get better and better as more data is available. So if you want to get started, you can go to the to the service page. You can also read this uh, blog post that I wrote. And, uh, and of course, you can buy the starter kit from uh, a number of uh, Amazon websites. Now, Monitron is great. I really like the service. But you know, what if you already have sensors and historical data? Well, uh, we have another service for you then. And this one is called Amazon Lookout for Equipment. And it, it has the same purpose, but this time uh, you can use sensors that you've bought or uh, built yourself, and you can use historical data that you've already collected and send it for analysis. But the purpose is generally the same. So uh, starting from historical data that you've collected from your own sensors uh, and uh, maintenance records, telling you, well, you know, this sensor stopped picking up data, but, you know, it wasn't a breakdown. It was just our technicians uh, working on the equipment. Uh, you can upload everything to Amazon S3 or storage service where it's going to be picked up by uh, Lookout for Equipment and models are going to be trained. And this is based on an O2ML technique. So again, the only thing you have to do is upload your data in Amazon S3 in a well-defined format and look out for equipment. It's going to train the model and, uh, and let you uh, predict uh, on a schedule uh, new data coming from the sensors. Okay, so very simple, very, again, very smooth uh, workflow here. And the cool thing is it's really easy to integrate with whatever you already have, right? So you already have your IT systems. You already have your sensors collecting data, processing data, visualizing data, etc. And you already have your uh, uh, engineering teams and and uh, and uh, maintenance teams and technician teams that are uh, used to uh, uh, fixing uh, problems and uh, and answering alerts. So look out for equipment will fit right there. Um, again, all you have to do is upload your data to AWS in a well-defined format, and uh, then you can start predicting. Um, uh, new data once models have been trained and you can use uh, alerts and notifications uh, exactly in the same way as before except these come now from um, this machine learning powered service running in the AWS cloud okay so it's not it's not going to be very disruptive to how you do things probably everything you already have uh, is going to continue working which is nice um, Use cases and reference, again, uh, pretty similar to, uh, to Monitron. We see uh, customer success for, uh, you know, diagnosis equipment issues, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, plugging, uh, overloading, all kinds of problems on, the, on those uh, heavy uh, industrial equipments, and all, also production optimization. So understanding, you know, that maybe things are not broken, but they're not optimal. So you can, you can make them a little better. Okay, so companies working in energy or, you know, power and utilities and so on. And um, here too, we have, uh, we have existing customers, uh, a company called GS EPS, um, based in Korea and uh, uh, working in uh, energy production. And, uh, and again, uh, Mr. Uh, Kang Boom Lee, uh, executive VP, hits the nail on the head. Um, they moved from... Uh, physics-based models and business rules to uh, predictive models with uh, lookout for equipment. And they were able to deploy uh, this solution without any ML expertise, right? So uh, this, is, this is great because it just saves you time. You, you can get to work quicker. Uh, you don't need to build teams. You don't need to hire complete data science and machine learning teams. So, you know, you go quick to, uh, to, uh, to production and, of course, you, uh, you save money. Right, so that's that's great, and and we see other companies uh, again. GE is using uh, Lookout for equipment as well. 
The benefits, uh, again, they're pretty similar. So, uh, you know, it's ML fueled automation. So uh, use the data you have coming from your sensors, no need to change anything in, uh, in the factory or in the warehouse. That data is, is good to go. Uh, the only step may be a, a data preparation step to transform it uh, into the format that uh, look out for equipment expect, but then um, it will just flow very, very easily uh, all the way to training models and predicting. Uh, there's no upfront, uh, no contract. Uh, in uh, AWS fashion, you just pay as you go. Uh, you, pay per, uh, you pay 20 cents per gigabyte of data ingested, 24 cents per training hour, 25 cents per inference hour. So compared with, you know, procuring, managing uh, complex solutions, this is probably uh, a more cost-effective solution. Uh, it's uh, super scalable. Uh, it's going to uh, uh, it's going to scale to hundreds of devices, uh, of course, and uh, and uh, for each model, and then of course you can have multiple models. Um, and it's all powered by the AWS cloud. So, you know, you're not gonna hit any infrastructure limit because you have too much data, too many models and so on. It will scale. Um, it integrates uh, easily into existing workflows. Like I said, uh, it's not disruptive to uh, how you already do uh, uh, things. It's also easy to experiment with. So uh, you should be able to build a proof of concept very, very quickly uh, and uh, with very, very limited spend to, uh, you know, make up your own mind and see if the service is what you need or not. If you want to get started, the best thing you can do is to sign up for the preview. The service was announced at AWS reInvent in last December, just a few months ago. And at the time of recording, it is still in preview. Uh, hopefully not for much longer. Uh, you can also see code uh, on GitHub showing you how to prepare and, um, and upload uh, data for uh, Lookout for Equipment how to train models, and how to schedule uh, inference on new data, right? We have a collection of Jupyter notebooks, and you can just read those. And, uh, and again, see uh, if, you, if you like that, and then you can sign up for the preview. That's what I wanted to tell you today. We took a little trip through predictive maintenance with machine learning on AWS, uh, looking at two new services, Amazon Monitron and Amazon Lookout for Equipment. If you'd like to know more about these services or all our other AI and ML services, uh, you should go to ml.aws, which is a really simple URL to remember. Uh, feel free to connect. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and everywhere else. Uh, if you have questions later on, I'm happy to help. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for listening to me and have a great day. Bye-bye.